So you're looking to buy a truck, you want to safety haul your RV down the road, and you're not sure if you should get a single wheel or a dually rear wheel truck. In this video, I'll go over the differences between one and the other so you can make the decision on the truck that best fits your needs. Hi, I'm Steve with the Radar Road Warriors. In May of 2020, my brother and I both bought 2019 Ford Super Duty trucks. We both have similar campers, but our needs are completely different. So he bought a short bed F350 single rear wheel, and I bought a long bed F350 dually truck. In this video, I'm going to go over the things that we took into consideration. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you which truck we chose and why we chose the truck we did. You need to make sure you buy the truck that fits your needs best, not based on someone's opinions, based on their needs. To start off, let's consider where will you be traveling? Are you going to be traveling all over the US and counting different terrain, or will you be traveling close to home, only traveling a couple hundred miles at a time? As you get in different terrain that's unknown to you, you may come across areas that are high elevations, windy areas, or lanes that can be different sizes. If you have a dually truck, which has a wider footprint because of an extra set of tires, the back end is wider, you're taking up more of a lane. If you're on a highway situation where the lanes are wider, for the most part, you're good in those situations, but you do come across construction quite often where they have concrete barriers or cones. You need to consider if you are comfortable driving next to concrete barriers and cones with a wider truck, or if you are traveling in city situations where the streets are narrower, parking can be trickier, or on back roads, that sometimes the roads are nice and wide country roads, and next times they're in hilly areas and the roads are very narrow there. Next is handling and stopping. If we're looking at a dually truck, they have six tires versus four. That means more rubber on the road. Also, duallys have slightly bigger brakes, which means you have increased stopping power. I'm sure you've been on situations on the highway where traffic comes to a stop all of a sudden, and sometimes you want extra stopping power. Now, looking at the rubber on the road situation, if you were traveling in different terrains, such as going up and down mountains, you have sharper curves, elevations, that a more stable truck can be a benefit in those situations. I'm originally from Michigan, the lands are pretty flat. The only crosswinds I was ever worried about was going to cross the Mackinac Bridge. I recently took a trip from Michigan through California. There's a lot of hills and elevations that come across different trains you're unfamiliar with. For example, we were in Flagstaff, Arizona. It was a windy day, the crosswinds were gusting 40 to 50 miles per hour at 6,000 feet elevation. In situations like that, you want to consider where you'll be traveling and what you're comfortable with. One of the big deciding factors is will the truck you're hauling your RV with be your daily driver? If you have a daily route, you're probably familiar with what situations you encounter on that daily route. For example, if you have U-turns you have to make every day, if you have a long bed truck, the wheelbase is longer, which means the turning radius is wider. If you have to make a U-turn, you cannot make those in a short U-turn situation. If the island in the middle of the road is a little bigger, you have multiple lanes to make a U-turn, it'll work that time but if you have a city street U-turn, that is out of the question with a long bed truck. In a parking lot you'll be using, if you think about the size of the truck, a short bed truck is gonna have a shorter wheelbase will it fit into a spot a little better, a long bed truck is a longer wheelbase, and a dually truck is a long wheelbase plus a wider truck. In those situations, you'll have to take up four parking spaces, which normally does not happen at the front of the parking lot. You're gonna plan on parking at the rear of the parking lot and have to walk into the store. If you have to use parking garages, those are normally six foot eight tall. Pretty much any truck you're gonna haul a large RV with is gonna be tall and parking garages are out of the question. If you have downtown parking you have to use, those areas can be very small. If you have to pay for meter parking that are made for small cars, you have a large truck, well, you can see there's gonna be a problem there. One thing to consider if you wanna go visit downtown areas or tourist destinations, you can take public transportation, Ubers, Lyfts, other modes to get you there. So there is ways around it, but you have to consider where you're gonna be traveling and what you're comfortable with. Dually trucks do not fit in regular automatic car washes. If you buy one, you'll need to plan on washing yourself either at home or one of the manual car washes. And the last thing, if you're considering being a daily driver, is do you go through fast food to get your lunch or dinner? If you have a drive through at the wider like McDonald's, you might be able to take the outside lane and make it through on the dual lane situations. But if you like Taco Bell, we all know those drive throughs barely fit a little car and a big truck is definitely out of the question. One of the factors that varies for everyone's situation is towing capacity. You'll have to do some determination based on 
what your towing needs are, the size of your RV, if it's a travel trailer, if it's a fifth wheel, how big it is, how heavy it is, and what the truck you're towing with can handle. We have some links in the description down below that can help you out for that. But generally speaking, if you have a three quarter ton, which is a 250 or 2500, you can tow in the 2000 pound range for your payload capacity. You go up to a F350, you can be in the 3000 pound towing capacity. If you go up to a dually truck, you're gonna be in a 5,000 pound range. Those figures vary based on the options in your truck, if it's a short bed, long bed. You also have to take in consideration on your payload capacity, your passengers, and your cargo you put in the truck after it come off the factory line. You might have seen people say, go with an F450, you'll never have to worry about towing capacity ever again. Well, you wanna look at details on that. An F450 is heavier than an F350, and their GVW is the same 14,000 pounds which means a heavier truck takes up more of that GVW and an F350 technically can haul more based on the sticker. Now looking at a short bed versus a long bed. If you have a long bed truck hauling a fifth wheel, you really don't have to worry about your turning radius unless you really get jackknifed. And if you have a short bed truck, which means your bed is usually about two feet shorter than a long bed truck, when you're turning, getting into campsites or situations you need to turn around, maneuver in gas stations, your cap of the fifth wheel is gonna meet the cab of the truck. In situations like that, you turn too short, you can lose a back window. You'll have to get out, check turning radiuses, can be a little more of a hassle, but if you're not traveling a lot, it's not really a big deal. If you have a short bed truck and you wanna put a slider hitch into it to gain some turning radius clearance behind the cab of the truck, those hitches are a little bit heavier and you have to take consideration that'll take up part of your payload in the truck. You can watch this video that'll help you out to see if a slider hitch is what you want or you want a standard hitch. One thing you want to check on before you go and buy a heavier truck or a trailer in general is what the requirements are for licensing in your state. For example, states like California, Texas, Pennsylvania have different requirements. Some will say you need to have a CDL to haul a larger fifth wheel truck combination. Some of them you just need a different endorsement to haul a heavier trailer. That can be a big factor if you have a truck, don't have a license, and you're not able to get that license. I already have a CDL that wasn't a factor for me. My wife does not. However, we are from Michigan, and F-350 is not a problem for a person without a CDL to haul a recreational vehicle. One of the questions I see a lot is, I don't have a CDL, I have an F-350 hauling a big fifth wheel. Can I pass through one of these states that has special license requirements? And the answer to that is it goes back to the state that your license comes from. So I'm from Michigan, if I did not have a CDL and I want to pass through a state like Texas that has certain requirements, means my license is from Michigan, that's not a problem to pass through one of those states. One of the factors I didn't realize when I was buying this dually truck is you can't just go into any Ford dealership and say, I'm looking for a dually. They're gonna say, um, there's nothing around here, not in our lot, nothing in the lots around here, nothing in the state possibly. They seem to be concentrated more so in the southern states or over in the east coast area. In particular, when we picked up Whipster, we drove to Pennsylvania to pick it up, bring it back to Michigan, and finish the paperwork through our dealer. Let me tell you our story of why we chose a 2019 F350 Dually to pull our 41-foot fifth wheel weighing in just over 16,000 pounds. My wife and I travel to job sites across the United States, and we don't usually have a lot of notice getting to those areas. We'll drive 8 to 12-hour drive days, and we don't have time to wait for the wind to calm down and only travel on in nice weather days. We like to get exercise, which means parking at the back of the parking lot where we take up four parking spots, walk into the store, it's not a problem for us. We're not going to downtown areas, visiting the tour situations where you have small areas to park or parking garages. If we do those situations, we're gonna walk, we're gonna take an Uber, we're gonna get there other means besides our big truck. What we like to do is go hiking or visit small towns, and those areas typically are not overly congested and have plenty of space for our big dually truck. We don't like making U-turns. We're from Michigan where we don't normally have to make them. If I'm on a road and a GPS does make a U-turn here and the road is too narrow, we can't do it. I'll just go down to the next road, turn in the parking lot, turn around, we'll have plenty of space and get back on my way. My wife doesn't have a problem driving the truck to haul her RV because it is much more stable and no swing in the back because it is a dually vehicle. Now a disclaimer, she was a truck driver in the military. She drove a semi truck, which she's very familiar with the large turning radiuses and getting around and maneuvering with a big vehicle. Our normal daily activity is working construction sites. On construction sites that come with a lot of parking spaces and we don't have a problem fitting it into our daily route. Also, I chose a Ford versus a Ram, not because I'm partial to one or the other. I had a Ram prior to buying a Ford truck, 
But I did notice when I was sitting into the Ford trucks that I have a lot more head clearance. I am six foot five. My head would rub the ceiling and the ram, but it did have a moonroof. I made sure when we were looking at a new truck, we did not get a moonroof, and it had a lot more head clearance now with the F350. Also, I noticed driving the F350 compared to the Ram, the ergonomics are a little bit better, they fit my driving style better, which means at the end of a long drive day, I am not tired, my arms aren't sore, and I can keep on going. You'll find links to the information we talked about in the description down below, so you're gonna like the video over here next. Sometimes it's up here, sometimes down here. Depends on the device you're watching, or which way your screen is turned. We don't really know where they're gonna put it, but check it out. Hey, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.